And a very good morning to you. I don't know why we got the uh, the Paul Edwards uh, intro then for some reason. Chris Whitten with you. This is United Kingdom Talk here on uh, United Kingdom Radio. Just listening uh, to the news there. Uh, can you just imagine if you're a country and suddenly these two fighter jets suddenly land in your country and say, can we stay here, please? How wonderful is that? I hope that happens here in my garden. I quite like the idea of that. A couple of fighter jets suddenly just landing there from Libya or wherever and saying, well, we don't really like it there anymore. Can we stay? Oh, yes, please do. How wonderful. Can... I quite like an idea of that, flying on a fighter jet. Because they go quite fast, don't they? they? They kind of, not like a jet liner. You know, the acceleration must be that so you're, you're pushed back in the chair. You know, like as if you're going up into the air in, a, in an air rocket or something like that. Eh? Libyan jets arriving in, of, of all places, Malta. Do they have any army in Malta? I don't think they do, do they? But I mean, they must be very, great, very grateful <laughs> to now have two extra planes. To ferry people around. I wonder who will use these new fighter jets. Because Malta <coughs> isn't really known as an aggressive country, is it? Or a country with a, a large army. I don't know. I don't. I know nothing about Malta altogether. So I'm assuming that they don't have an army or anything like that. You know. To, so to suddenly have two of these jets. And presumably the pilots as well want to stay. Must be quite nice for them. I mean, I wonder what they use them for. I honestly can't see them going around, you know, uh, 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 sort of attacking people in them or anything like that. They're going to have to reconvert them, aren't they? Possibly as little, little um, shopping planes or something like that. Can fighter jets be converted into, into um, like, uh, passenger airliners or anything like that? Be quite nice just to have a little fly around. Maybe whoever's in charge of Malta. I don't even know his name. We don't, we don't hear about him much, do we? Eh? I think he must be a good boy. He's not one of the bad boys, the guy in charge of Malta. Poor old Gaddafi. Anyone see the news? Poor old Gaddafi doing doing a bit of a chat while sitting in the doorway of a car with an umbrella. I mean, it wasn't even a posh umbrella, was it? It looked like one of those free things that you'd get from the supermarket after saving up seven box tops from Frosties or something like that. Very, very strange. Poor old Gaddafi is another one out there. Who's going to be next? It's all going on in the Middle East, isn't it? It's absolutely all going on in the Middle East. I wonder who's going to be next? Egypt? Bolivia? Libya? Who's next? Very, 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 very strange what's going on there. Um, good morning to Wayne, who says, you need a G-suit today, Chris. What is a G-suit? I don't know what a G-suit is. I've got today on a white polo uh, T-shirt. You may have noticed in the last couple of programmes, I've been wearing polo shirts. Now, the reason for that is, um, number one, <clears throat> you must be fed up wearing, seeing those same old shirts. Do you know what? I've been wearing the same shirts on this show now for about two and a half years. I've got about eight of them all together, and I just rotate them. I never see the point of buying anything until something else is worn out. It's just a complete and utter waste of money, don't you think? Unlike my friend Ron, my best friend Ron, who I will be visiting later on today, after the show, after I've done a little bit of editing and that sort of thing, I should be jumping in my car and going over to East London, seeing what he's got, and we're probably going... Uh, where are we going today? We're going uh, swimming, because he's a member of the um, Virgin... Uh, Virgin, um, what is it called now? Vir Virgin Gyms. Virgin, Virgin Active, that's it. He's a member of Virgin Active, and he gets so many free guest passes. So instead of going to my usual swimming pool, I will be going to the Virgin a Active one, which is actually very, very nice. It's in Islington, in, uh, in London. Uh, oh, it's really nice in there. The swimming pool is a little bit smaller than the one I'm used to. <clears throat> but I think the length is about the same. It's just the width is a bit small. It does get a lot busier in there than, than my one does, I must say. But as well as the swimming pool, you've got the gym and all that if you want to use that. Actually, that's an idea because he does do gym. I mean, I could try a bit of that today. I haven't done gym for about three, three years now. I find it incredibly boring, you know, going somewhere and lifting bits of metal. Or walking on these um, walking machines and not actually getting anywhere. 
It's a very strange thing. You can go on these walking machines, you can walk for five hours, and still, you don't get anywhere. What's all that about? Isn't it better to go out and walk around a park? Or even around shops, of course, not spending money as you go. We can't have any of that going on, dear. Eh? Also in this Virgin Active, they have the most marvellous hot pool. I, I, I wouldn't say it's a jacuzzi. There are areas. I mean, it's massive, this, this, this pool. There are areas in the pool where there are bubbles, but not the whole thing. So I don't think it's called a... Probably called a spa. Is it a spa? You know, when there's a, when there's a large sort of pool type thing and you sit in different areas and you push buttons and in one area there's bubbles come up in another area these water jets come down on your back oh it's lovely and it's warm it's hot it's actually not warm it's hot in there very very nice indeed never know i might get chatting to someone in there it might happen come on lads if there's anyone interested you know if you're having a look now at this program i think you know it's not bad you know and it's um let me give you the time and day oh by the way um yes if you're with us live I had you know if you're with us live or watching a recording. Okay, look at your clock now. UK time. Okay, if you go to unitedkingdomradio.co.uk, there is a clock on there. It gives you the UK time. Okay, unitedkingdomradio.co.uk. Look at the UK time. If it is now, uh, coming up to 12 minutes past 11, on the 22nd of February 2011, Tuesday, then you are with us live. And that means you can join in live as well. Now, if it is that day where you are now, then just to let you know, lads, I'll be, d <laughs> I'll be down the Virgin Active. OK, sports place today, probably in the spa area at round about 3.30 this afternoon, OK? So if you want to sit next to me and strike up a conversation in the hope that you might be able to, you know, take me out for a date or something, then please feel free to do so. I mean, you've got to advertise yourself, haven't you? You absolutely have to advertise yourself. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to going down to the Virgin thing. And then maybe afterwards we might be going to the cinema. I don't know what we're going to see. Maybe The, Qu the King's Speech is supposed to be quite a good film. And probably have a bit of lunch as well. Although I don't want to have too much to eat today. Because I did quite well yesterday with the uh, eating. As you know, once again, we're overweight again, boys and girls. We're overweight once again. And I need to lose a little bit of weight. Um, and uh, yesterday, all I had yesterday was, for breakfast, blueberries and bran flakes. Okay? Then I had nothing till lunchtime. And that was... Um, uh, New Covent Garden tomato soup and one piece of wholemeal bread, not too thick. OK, and then for dinner, I had beans on one piece of toast. That's all I had yesterday, although on the way home, I mucked up a little bit on the way home, to be honest, from work, because we're very, very hungry by then. I thought a small bag of crisps, you know, just a small bag of crisps won't hurt. <clears throat> so I went into the BP, B, BP garage in um, Richmond on the... Uh, uh, Lower Richmond Road, or is it the Mortlake Road? I think it's the Lower Richmond Road. I went in there, and um, I uh, I said, can I have a bag of crisps, please? He said, yeah, OK. So he come back with two bags. He said, um, it's two for one today. Oh, I mean, what can you do? What can, and not only that, they were the grab size bags. I know what you're saying. You are saying, aren't you? Well, why didn't you just have one bag then and have another bag tomorrow? Not possible. OK, this is the problem with these two for one offers, isn't it? If it's chocolate or crisps or something like that, you get the two and you cannot eat one. Well, I can't. So I had the one bag of crisps and I thought, oh, I might as well have the other bag. So I did have two bags of crisps on the way home. But the scales this morning did indicate a small drop in weight. So I must have done something wrong yesterday, right yesterday. So not bad with the food eating there at all today. Uh, some messages coming in. Now, James, who is our latest presenter here on United Kingdom Radio, he'll be trying out on Saturday afternoon at 5 o'clock UK time. James is 12 years old, OK? Now, he's being a bit naughty at the moment, James, aren't you? Because he is listening to this show... At his physics lesson at school. Very bad, James. By the way, James, uh, I passed my physics O level, which is a bit like a GCSE. I don't know what you have now. What do you have now? I have got physics O level. So if you want any help with that, anything, you know, physics-wise, 
Then don't ask me because, it quite, quite frankly, I think it was a bit of a fluke that I passed. Don't understand physics or chemistry. What is all that about? Why do we want to know how quickly an apple drops off a tree? Do we need to know that? Is that something that we need to know to help us along? I'm just trying to think. In my life, <clears throat> right, in my life, has the fact that an apple drops at so many newtons or whatever so quickly, has that helped me in my quest for global domination? I don't think it has, to be honest. So I wouldn't worry too much, James. But can you do me a favour? Turn off your iPhone and watch the recording later on and pay attention to the physics teacher. Dear me. Pay attention. Do other people know that you're listening? Huh? What are your friends doing? Are they paying attention at the lesson? It's very wrong, very wrong. I hope you like school. What's the school dinners like there, by the way? Are you, I, we loved, I loved my school dinners. I went to the uh, London Oratory School in Fulham. Um, that would have been in the 70s. And our school dinners were amazing there. Really, really nice. Anyway, James, come on. Put the phone down and get on with your lesson. That's it. Wayne says, uh, the grab size crisps are the big eat bigger bag crisps. Well, I know that. And I had two of them. Which is not good. But there were two for one. I mean, what do you say? Oh, no, I just have one bag, please. I mean, you end up looking an idiot, don't you? And besides, it's not cost-effective to do that. If there's two for one, then you have to have the two. And that's it. He said, well, they weren't a small packet, were they? No, of course they weren't a small packet. That's why they're called grab size, because you grab them. Unfortunately, I grabbed two bags. Good morning, Phil. Phil says he's live today. Well, that's debatable, I think. People in Hoddesdon are all alive today. Good morning, Phil. Uh, there's an email address if you want to join in at any time, boys and girls, whether you're with us live or as a recording. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now... Just watching a little bit of television before I came upstairs today. First of all, um, OK TV. Now, apparently this started last week. And the reason I, I switched it on, because a friend of mine who works on a LBC, Steve Allen, he was talking about this in his last show. You have to excuse me, I'm coughing a bit today and sniffing, so I keep pushing the button so that you don't hear that. You might. Can you hear a click when I do this or not? See? It's good, isn't it? I've got a little button here that I push when I cough or make a horrible noise so that you can't hear it. I think James has gone now because he has, hasn't answered that good. It's, more, it's much more important, um, James, to pay attention to your physics lessons and to listen to this, old, this sad old character rabbit on, on about rubbish. It really is. Do pay attention. Oh, just quickly here. Um, Andrew, hello, Andrew, says, I've been to see the King's Speech at the local cinema and I can highly recommend it. Great cast, great acting, and an interesting story with lots of humorous moments. We like humorous films. This is the big mistake with James Bond, recent James Bond films. I no longer find them humorous. They are, of course, you know, all action. But, I, you know, James Bond, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, who's the other? There was another one, wasn't there? I can't remember the others. But the more recent one is just not humorous, is he? He's very good looking. Very good looking, but it's just not funny. And that, that is missing from the James Bond films. Um, and it says, makes you wonder if the war might have gone a little differently if the king hadn't been able, with help, to overcome his stammer. Well, quite, quite, you know, quite possibly. Quite possibly. So I don't know if we're going to see that film or not. Um, I'm hoping to, but the trouble is, my best mate Rain is a bit stuck of himself. And he's already rung me and told me there are no premier seats in the gallery. We, he likes to go to this cinema in Greenwich, the Odeon in Greenwich. And it's a beautiful place. And upstairs, <clears throat> they have what is known as the gallery. Now, these seats are a bit more expensive than the other ones. But on a Tuesday, for some reason, he gets two tickets for one. So... If we buy, uh, I think, two tickets, we're at, it's actually £20 a seat. Now, I wouldn't pay £20 to go and see a film. I, I just wouldn't pay that. 
Certainly not just for a comfortable seat. Wouldn't pay it. But on Tuesday, he gets two for one. So it's actually £20 for two of us. And included in the price is as much soft drinks as tea as you can drink. Um, you get popcorn and you get those <clears throat> um, Dorito things and a little dip, whatever. And that's that's all included in the price. So it's actually quite a good deal when you're getting two for one. So that's how we do it. Now, he's already informed me that the King's Speech is not in the gallery. So he wants to see something else. I mean, it's, you know, it's a joke, isn't it? Won't sit in an ordinary seat. He's, he really is so far up himself, it's unbelievable. But you'd like him if you met him. I'm trying. He keeps saying he's going to do a show, but he never does it. He never does. If he did a show, you'd have to listen to it. You would. Because ch- you think I'd chat. You wait till you hear him. He goes on and on and on. The only thing is he has to watch his language. I mean, when I'm not doing my show here, my mouth is honestly a little bit bad. It's a bit naughty, my mouth, you know, with the swear words and that. You, you won't hear me swear while I'm doing a show. I don't think it's right to swear on the telly or, or on the radio or whatever. This isn't the telly, really. You know, it's just a computer thing. But I, I just don't think it's right to swear. He, on the other hand, sometimes lets things slip. And he upsets people sometimes through what he says. There was an, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what it was, but it was an incident in Sainsbury's last Tuesday when he came over. And he upset a couple of ladies in there who were, who were stocking the... Um, uh, the the cat food section, but he usually recovers from it quite well. So, <laughs> and he's he's what I call an aggressive driver. He's he, ha- he hates cyclists, and he drives too close to people, too close. There's going to be an accident one day, as I've told him time and time again. But he doesn't listen to me. Doesn't listen to me. Doesn't listen to me to his best mate. So I am trying to get him to do a show. He keeps saying he will, and then it doesn't happen. So I don't know when he's going. He said, can I sit in for you? I said, no, you can't. You can't sit in for me one day. Dear me. My dear, my dear friends, my dear loyal viewers and listeners, cannot be subject to something at my time like that. I'll put him on at another time. Then you choose whether you want to listen or not, you know? Um... <clears throat> Uh, James says, me and my friend Josh are listening. I know how you're doing it. I bet you've got, an, you've got one of those earphones, haven't you? And you've got one earbud in each ear, haven't you? You've got one earbud and your friend Josh has got another earbud. Is that right? Are any of you paying attention to that physics lesson today? Or are you all sitting here watching this or listening to this show? It's wrong. Pay attention to the physics teacher or you won't get anywhere. You've got to pay attention or you won't get anywhere, Josh. Come on, Josh, tell him to turn it off. Anyway, um, was talking... Was there another message coming there? Um, Yeah, Wayne says, maybe you should be the next James Bond, Chris. Do you think I'd make a good... No, because you have to start sleeping with all those women, don't you? Oh, no, I can't be having any of that. Thank you very much. No, 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 we've done that. We've been there. Okay, we've done that one. We're not doing that. All right? (laughs) It'll have to... I could be... The world's first gay James Bond. Does that does that does that sort of work or, you know, I mean, I do everything else. I don't mind, you know, with the gadgets, especially the gadgets. I quite like to have some of those gadgets or possibly jumping off a cliff into the into the water or something like that. You know, flying in an in an ice um, in a, in an ice uh, cave, going up to the moon, like they did. Was it Octopussy that one? Octopussy. Yes. Just an idea. Wayne says, who says you have to sleep with women? You could bring in a new franchise. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah, I could be a new version of the James Bond. Does it, will that work? <laughs> Just a suggestion. You know, it, it may or may not work. Uh, if you're with us live, it's um, 23 minutes past 11. On Tuesday, the 22nd of February, 2011, you can join in live by Skype or telephone. Our Skype username is all one word. It's United Kingdom Radio. OK, the Skype username, United Kingdom Radio. We also have a phone-in number. If you want to call in, 20 3287 All right, 20 3287 one four double eight. OK. Now, um, as I was saying, I was watching this uh, TV show, OK TV. My friend um, Steve Allen, who does LBC, he's not my friend to talk to, I just know him. Um, 
uh, he was saying that he, he thought the show was pretty dire and it won't last. So I thought I'd watch that today. And I have to say, it wasn't too bad, actually. It was nowhere near as bad as I thought. Now, this show is on Channel 5, I think around about 6 o'clock in the evening, somewhere like that. Some, can someone look that up, please, for us? Um, um, the um, uh, uh, the time there. What time is the uh, the OK TV show on Channel Five? And it replaced a show called Live at Five or Live from Studio Five or something like that, which was awful. I mean, it was wasn't good that at all. The presenters were very cheesy and plastic, and it 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 didn't do it for me sitting behind a desk. Now the two presenters on this OK TV actually aren't bad at all. I think Matt and some girl. I can't remember who the presenters are now. To be honest, yeah, I'm not very well well prepared today. Let's have a quick look. Um, OK TV presenters. I'll tell you who they are in a minute. Let's see. <clears throat> Nope, that's not there. Um, here we are. Kate Walsh and Matt Johnson. OK? Kate Walsh and Matt Johnson. And actually, they're not bad at all, those two. They seem to do the job. Certainly not as bad as I thought, uh, as uh, Steve Allen was saying. But yeah, they do the job. But um, unfortunately, on, on the first show that I watched, they had two of those uh, that... that uh, that um, bloke from that dreadful TV programme, The Only Way is Essex, Mark. You know, Mark and his new girlfriend. I don't know who his new girlfriend is, but uh, she sounded American. Does anyone know who that is? Who is Mark from The Only Way is Essex? He had his girlfriend on there and the two of them were being interviewed and they just come across as so false. You know, they've got these bright white teeth. Both of them have got bright white teeth. Well, they've obviously been lasered or teeth whitened or something like that. And these, these teeth are glinting. In, and it's just so false. And she, um, she's, she's, she, she probably is pretty enough, but she's had her hair dyed jet blonde. And she's got big lips. She's probably had the collagen in the lips and all that. And again, the white teeth. And it just looks so false. Why do people muck around with their faces like this? Especially when they're that young. You know, these people in this program aren't old. I suppose late 20s, early 30s, are they? Something like that. You know... It's it's just so false, and I can't stand it. And unfortunately, that turned me off from from the rest of the program. Uh, the interview with Mark and his and his girlfriend, and, and he, he's talking like that. And, he, and I, I sort of wonder if he really talks like that. Do you know what I mean, mate? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm from Essex. My name's Mark, and we all talk like this here, innit? it? Actually, the in it the in it is not actually no, that that's wrong. That is not an Essex word. Uh, the in it is actually a South London word. I myself can be heard to be saying that occasionally in private. In private. Now, it's um, OK TV. It's at uh, 25 past six in the evening, if you want to try that one out. Channel 5, OK TV at uh, 25 past six in the evening. So anyone else seen that OK TV? What did you think of it? I don't know who was on there last week, but I might be giving it a little watch. I do quite like that. OK TV with... Um, Matt and, uh, what's that other girl's name? Matt and Kate. Yeah, they seem to do the job all right. No complaints there. One of the things I'm getting annoyed about at the moment, I listen occasionally, if I'm going to listen to music radio, it'd be something fairly light-hearted. Recently, on the way into work, I have on occasion listened to Capital Radio, believe it or not, and I'm not a fan of independent local radio because it all sounds the same. Once again, it all comes across as completely false. There's no personality allowed there from the presenter. I'm sure some of the presenters have got wonderful personalities, but it's not allowed to shine through. You have to fit in with the format of the station. You know, we have a very loose format here on United Kingdom Radio. But very, very loose. No swearing, no music, and no very strong sex stuff. We don't want any of that. Apart from that... It's fairly loose. A little bit like me. I'm quite loose as well. As some of you know. Very, very loose at times. You know, so that's our format. But on, on independent local radio that play music, it's very, very tight format. You're not really allowed to show your personality through. Or if you are, then <clears throat> the radio stations certainly seem to make a very good job of hiding it. 
so I'm not a fan. But I've been listening to Capital, really, just to hear what the latest music is coming out, really. That's why I listen to that. And uh, also, I like to listen to Smooth Radio with um, Simon Bates. He's on in the morning, and various other people. Andy Peebles is on at night. I quite like the music there. Again, it's a little bit too formatted for what I like, but it is fairly um, nice easy listening music especially if you've been DJing somewhere all night it's all been a bit loud and a bit hard you know you know R&B and all that and it's quite nice to listen to a little bit of easy listening on the way home in the car but it is starting to really annoy me they do this starlight supper thing okay wonderful idea the idea is the station is uh, do you know I'm just putting my foot next to my computer just a second I've just put my foot next to one of the computers down, and it's it's feeling fairly warm. I'm going to have a look at that before. Um, I'm sure that shouldn't be that warm. I think it might be that because um, I haven't pulled it back for a while. I better check that the um, little holes on the back are not full of fluff. Very important, that boys and girls. You don't want fluff, okay, in the back of your computer. It will overheat, and I'm, I've just touched it with my foot there, and it does feel quite warm at the moment. So I'll have a look at that later on. Um, oh, where was I now? Oh, what was I talking about then? I've, I've lost the plot now. I can't remember what I was talking about now. Oh, yes, that, that's it. Smooth radio. I lo Did you see that? I lost the plot. A moment of that um, old people's disease then. What's it called? You know, where you forget things? I had that then, didn't I? I actually... You saw that live, boys and girls. You saw it start... You actually saw it start then, didn't you? Eh? All very, very worrying indeed. Is this the start of it? Well, I'm just going to start forgetting everything. Alzheimer's disease. Thank you, Wayne. Alzheimer's disease. You saw the first stages of that then. Now, you, you should save this programme so that in ten years' time, when I can't remember what I'm doing, then, then, then you'll say, look, Chris, do you remember this? This was the start of it. Because some want to do that, you know. My best friend Ron would like would probably do that. Is that sort of thing he'd do? So Smooth Radio, um, they're doing this Starlight Supper thing, where they're raising money for Macmillan Nurses, which is a, a wonderful, wonderful organisation, okay, and a great idea to do it. But they're overdoing it. Do you know what I mean? It's virtually every time I turn on the radio, they're wittering on about the Starlight Supper. And how fantastic it's going to be, which it is. But I don't need to hear about it every ten blooming minutes. They, they, they started doing this <clears throat> a couple of years ago. You remember, I'm sure you've heard the How Low Auctions, where an item comes on. For example, a, um, a laptop computer. And then you are invited to ring in on a premium rate number for about a pound. OK, to make a bid for this item and the person with the lowest unique bid wins. Now, I don't mind them doing that, but I don't want to turn the radio on <clears throat> every time they're going on and on about it. And at the moment, on smooth radio, it's making me turn off because I'm sick to death of hearing about the starlight suppers. You know, every 10 or 15 minutes they're going on about their blooming starlight suppers. Wonderful. Do it. Raise the money. But please, for Christ's sake, stop reminding us about it. There we are. So that's one thing that's annoying me at the moment. All right. Email time, boys and girls. <clears throat> We're falling a little bit behind with our emails at the moment, actually. So we want to catch up with a few of these today. All right, uh, first of all, uh, hello to James, who's been sending in a, a couple of emails. Thank you, James, very kind of you. Um, who says, glad you're getting better now, Chris. Yes, the cold has gone. The voice is still a little bit funny, but it's nearly gone now. Um, heard Stephen Parker on your show the other day. He can come up with some good subjects. Yes, he certainly can. I heard him talk about the history of talk shows and callers from a book he was reading. I hope he comes up with more subjects like that. It seems an unusual February. Not complaining, as there has been much worse weather. From James in Bexley. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it hasn't been that cold this February. We had the cold weather this time in November. It's strange, isn't it? When we had all that cold weather last November. And February has been reasonably warm, really. It's a little bit cold at the moment, but I gather it's going to warm up again 
on um, tomorrow. I gather it's going to warm up again after tomorrow night. So we're all looking forward to that. Um, let's try and get these in the order they came in. Hello to um, Chris, who actually sent this in a little while ago, didn't you? Oh, hang on, I've got these all in the wrong order now. There's 16, 18, oh yeah, what's that one? 13, 13, I'll, I'll read them on in the, in the dates they came in, there we are. Hello to Chris in Victoria in Australia, where they've had a very hard time, haven't they, recently? And of course now, in the same region, they've had that dreadful earthquake in New Zealand. Um, was it last night? Awful. What a terrible time they are having in that area, in that sort of whole Australia, New Zealand area at the moment. Cyclones, flooding, everything. Now an earthquake. F bushfires. Chris writes, good day, Chris. I wish you a very late happy birthday. Best wishes, and I hope you had a wonderful day. Yeah, it was all right, thank you. The reason why I'm late, as I thought you were still in with us down under. I hope during your next visit to us, you might think about Melbourne once again. Yeah, I might do, might do, don't know yet. He says, I'll treat you to a nice Pizza Hut dinner. Actually, I now have my preferred um, pizza place is now Domino's, who are doing very well at the moment. Have you seen, have you uh, read about that? Domino's are doing extremely well. Very well, their profits are way up and all that business. So they must be doing something right. I like Domino's pizza. They're not too tight with the cheese. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? When you go for a pizza and they're a bit tight with the cheese. I don't like that. I like it to be dripping with cheese. Dripping. Although not at the moment because we are trying to lose weight. <coughs> uh, Chris says, uh, Pizza Hut is fine dining for me, mate. Yeah, me too, mate. Me too. Pizza Hut is fine dining for me as well. Don't ever be taken to many of those nasty posh restaurants where you pay £200 and you're still hungry afterwards. I mean, what is the point of that? Eh? Why do people do it? Just because it's got Jamie Oliver or... or What's his name? The one who swears all the time? Um... I don't know what his name is. That one who swore, just because it's got their name over the door. Don't be charging me £200 for a meal, thank you very much. You know. Carvery, I don't mind a carvery, as long as it's not overpriced. He says, hope you can give a shout out on my birthday, which is the 12th of February. I've missed that, haven't I? Oh, for Christ's sake. I tell you what, to make up, I'll sing it to you now. to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear chris happy birthday to you yeah sorry about that chris um because of a little pile of emails that's built up i missed that didn't i <gasps> I can't believe I'm 10 days late with that nearly. 10 days late. Sorry, Chris. Anyway, I hope you had a nice birthday. What did you do? Write in and let us know. Come on. I miss that wonderful voice that keeps the neighbours' dogs away from our bins. Are you talking about my voice? Keeping dogs away from bins? My voice used to attract dogs. But now I don't get anyone offering. It's terrible. <laughs> Just wondering, did you take any pictures while on holiday? You might be able to share with the listeners. Yes, I did. Um, you can see those on my Facebook. OK, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. Look for an album there. All right, look for an album there uh, entitled um, Australia 2011 or something like that. OK. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And I am always listening to you, my friend, even if I'm quite slack about writing in as late. And that's from uh, Chris in Australia. Nice to have you. Again, sorry I missed your birthday there. That's my fault because I've not been keeping up with the emails. Um, <clears throat> uh, Mike says, Hi Chris, just remembered you were on. Sorry I've been job hunting. Got an interview with the AA soon. Is that the car people? Are you a mechanic, Mike? Can you do, can you fix cars and all that sort of thing? That's very good. I didn't know you could do all that. Uh, another one here from uh, James. Actually, there's a three here from James that uh, I've been collecting over the last few weeks. Sorry again. Um, 
Hi, Chris. Um, found some of your old videos of old shows on YouTube. It's been good to see what you've discussed in the past. You mentioned on the 14th of March 2009 show that your shows went out on community radio in Bracknell. And I remember that your show went out on other radio stations. You haven't mentioned that lately. Do you still do this or does it now just remain on United Kingdom radio? It now only is live on United Kingdom radio. And the reason for that is because we wanted United Kingdom radio to, to try and be unique and to have shows on that you couldn't get anywhere else, uh, which indeed it is. But we are, you know, here we are a year and a, a little bit since we started. And quite frankly, we are desperate to find more people to have a go. It's very, very difficult finding people, number one, that want to do a talk radio show uh, for nothing. You know, because there's no money being made anywhere. The show costs, the, the, the whole station costs me uh to actually be there, albeit not, it's not, it's not too expensive to actually run a station, but that's okay, you know, I don't mind that, um, it don't actually costs me, we don't make any money here, we run at a loss, okay, we run at a loss, even the mixes that I make, the, the music mixes, to be honest, haven't gone as well as I thought they would, um, when I was giving out the mixes free of charge, okay, they were being downloaded two to three hundred, two to three hundred times, but seriously, two to three hundred people were downloading those mixes when they were free. The moment I started charging for them, uh, uh, the grand total of 80 pence, OK, 80 pence, uh, it, it dropped like a stone. And we sell, I suppose, about five a week, 80p each. Right. I'm going to drop the pen here. The eighty p each. We only download about five, five, six a week, perhaps, um, and I don't get the eighty p either. We get fifty seven pence out of that eighty back. Okay, so they really haven't gone as well as I thought. Um, <laughs> the, the whole joke of it, as well, is that it actually costs to have a company to sell the mixes for you to host them and sell them. And, and it's actually costing more to sell them than it is to give them away free of charge. Um, I don't know what to do about that. It also takes time to upload these things. And I, th I, I, I really didn't think it would, it, you know, out of 300 people who downloaded them a day, okay, a day, gone down to about 10 a week. OK. But probably not even 10, about six a week. So that's a huge drop. I thought we might have sold 20 or 30 a week, but uh, it, it, it's not the case at all. So at the moment, it's actually costing more to sell those mixes, those DJ mixes, than it is to give them away free of charge. Which is just madness, really. I had hoped I'll try it for a bit longer and see if it picks up at all. But there we go. That's the way it is. Now, if you want to download one yourself, as I say, they're 80 pence each. There's usually a new one up there every Saturday. And you'll find those at chrisreardonshow.co.uk. One hour, 20 minutes of non-stop music. You get the track list as well there. It's all there for 80 pence. OK, once again, Chris Reardon Show. Dot co dot uk. The reason I started selling them was not to actually make loads of money, but to try and get the radio station to pay for itself. But it's, at the moment, it's costing more to actually sell them to give them away. And I think if, if I don't sell more within a couple of months, then I'll just shut that side of it down altogether and uh, I won't bother doing them anymore. Because it, it all takes time, you know. It all takes time and effort. And if people don't want them, that's the way it is. It's, it's just the way it is. All right, once again, if you want to try one of those, chrisreardonshow.co.uk, chrisreardonshow.co.uk. And you can only, but you have to use, have to have PayPal to actually buy one of those, all right, PayPal. Although most people on the internet, I think, have got PayPal. Um... Let's have a look here. Phil says, um, anyone want to buy a Windows 7 netbook? No, thank you. No, thank you. Those uh, Windows little, those little netbooks. Tiny little things, aren't they? I always say, oh, we have a lot of people in netbooks. Because in Belushi is one of the places I work. Um, a lot of the youngsters in there seem to have these netbooks. And I always make a little joke of going around and saying to them, oh, you've got a netbook. If you saved up a little bit longer, you could have a real one. And I just walk off. 
Poor old Phil. If you do, so there you go, Phil. Save up a bit more and you can have a real computer. All right? You can have a real computer. <laughs> Just a suggestion. <laughs> um, where's that message there? There it is. Got to say hello to... Um, ah, Angel Girl. Good evening. Hello, Kat. All right? Angel Girl on, on the Yala White. She's with us today. Back to this email. Um... She said, um, where are we? James says, it seems a bit quiet on the presenter front. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. We, we need more presenters, really, at the moment. Shame there's been a few gone. I know there are reasons for them going. Just hope the future of United Kingdom Radio is just as good. Sorry if this seems I'm going over old ground, but this radio station seems like a real alternative station on the traditional stations, as I find it isn't all good programmes on there. Well, it's the same here. You know, some people will like my show. Some people will hate my show. Some people will like um, Suko's show. Some people won't like Suko's show. It just depends how it goes. You know, not everyone likes everyone. And that's the thing. Um, James says he, well, he's sorry about his misspellings. Don't worry, James. I can usually work out what you're saying. It's not a spelling test right in here. I'm grateful to receive the emails. He says, I usually do my emails on my desktop computer, which doesn't present a problem. But as you can see, when I'm away from my desktop, disaster strikes. I will try an email from my desktop so the problems won't occur. I was saying um, these quick service places that serve things like sandwiches, coffees, can present their problems. I find if you've got a good management in these places, then I find that the place is quite good. I found this quite a lot. Argos is one shop, I find this. One branch that is near me, uh, the place is untidy and the staff are rude, and there is nothing in stock. Is This this is a, your branch of Argos, is it? But there are also two other branches of Argos near me, and it is worlds apart. I have gone in there, and it's quite tidy. The staff are helpful, and the majority of the stock is available. If not... They will put it on the reserving system so that when you get the item, when their lorry turns up uh, with the item, um, uh, it, it's all done. Yeah, you see, so you can't always say, it's, it's like people that say a particular shop, a brand of shop is bad. It may well be, in, as in your case, only that shop. You say the Argos nearest to you is, is, isn't good service, and yet the other two are. So remember that. Now... I have to tell you, I went to um, a burger place with uh, with Ron on Thursday last week. Byron Burgers, B Y R O N. Now the decor in this place, I mean, leaves something to be desired. It really does. It's been decorated as not looking finished, and that that is the finished item. That that's the the look of the place. I think it looks dreadful in there. Um, the burger uh, was a bit raw in the middle. And the chips never arrived. It, it was, it was, uh, the, I have to say, you know, the staff in there were friendly enough. They really were. But <clears throat> the job wasn't done. Do you see what I mean? And um, I left there sort of, I mean, the milk, I've got to say that the strawberry milkshakes in there are to die for. Strawberry milkshakes. Really very, very nice. Byron Burgers in Islington. Um, the service, the service was good. It was good, but there were elements of it that were missing. And, you know, the burger not cooked properly. I can't be eating a burger and bite into it, and it's pink in the middle. No, thank you, dear. No, thank you. You know, I've got to admit, I didn't say to him, I want it well done. On the other hand, he didn't say, how do you want it done? You go to America, and they ask you how you want these things done. You know, we weren't asked that. We ordered the chips. We kept asking. They didn't arrive at all. You know, so disappointed there. Um, my mate wrote to them and he has re received a reply apologising and um, offering him to go in and have a free lunch, which is fair enough. That's quite a good service. Personally, I won't go back there because I wasn't happy with the experience. Usually, if I'm if I'm upset by a company or an organisation or something, once I've gone, that's it. I won't go back. I had terrible, terrible, terrible problem with the three telephone network about 12, 14 years ago now. I would never go back there. Absolutely never go back there. I have been approached by them um, several times um, 
And and I tell them, you know, I had bad service there. About to, oh, well, will it change? And they say, oh, well, it's change it. No, you had your chance. You're not having my money anymore. End of story. You know, that's it. Once I've been upset by a person or an organisation, I'm afraid I'm pretty unforgiving, which is a terrible thing. I, I wish I was more forgiving. Like my mum, my mum and dad would forgive anyone. But I, when I'm upset by something, that's it. It's very, very difficult for me to come back out of that again. James also says, um, the Valentine's Day thing is a load of hype. Yes, it certainly is. As I found out about 10 to 15 years ago, it was a bit of fun and thinking of your other half if you had one. Now it's becoming a total ripoff. Yes, it is. And I keep telling you people, I keep telling you, do not buy flowers and cards on Valentine's Day. Wait till the day afterwards because they drop in price like a stone. They absolutely do. Don't be doing it. It's such a rip-off. Christmas is a rip-off. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, all rip-offs. OK? If you really want to do something, grow your own flowers and cut them and send them off. Do not be spending a hundred quid on a bunch of roses. or whatever. It's just such a waste of money. It really is. Um, and nothing to do with love. Nothing to do with love. If you love someone, just tell them. You don't need to go around buying them cars and cards and... Uh, did it say cars then? Well, I wouldn't mind a car being bought for me. Cards and flowers and chocolates and all this rubbish. You don't need to do it. Um, James says, some people are buying into the hype too. It's not being mean. If you like someone or have another half, then you will always love them and treat them well, whatever the time of year. Sorry to keep on about it. And as for cars... Because we're talking about cars as well. I know they're expensive to run on petrol, but now the manufacturers have never come up with a proper alternative, although they say oil is running out. Uh, liquid gas never took off. That's right. The LPG thing never really took off, which is, you know, all those people that perhaps for a while were thinking of either buying a, a, an LPG car or having theirs converted. Aren't you glad you didn't have it done now? I mean, how many petrol stations do you see with LPG? You, you Very few. I'm trying to think now, and I, I, only, I only know of one, actually, at the beginning of the M3 at Sunbury, the Shell one there. I think they've got one there. But the whole LPG thing never really took off, did it? Um, and he goes on to say, because there were horror stories about liquid petroleum gas and it wasn't viable. Battery-powered cars hit the headlines from time to time, saying that these free terminals in public are never used. Now, I've never actually seen an electric car plugged into one of those free charging stations. On the other hand, there still aren't many of them around, are there? Although there is the new Nissan Leaf car, <coughs> which actually I've been looking at, but it's very, very expensive. £23,000, one of these cars. The Nissan Leaf car. They've got to come down in price. Now, the Nissan Leaf has a, a, um, a, um, a range of, I think, about 100 miles. All right? So that, that's not too bad at all, actually. I could probably get that, I reckon. But I would need a couple of charging stations, certainly on the way to my sister's, or, or if I go to Brighton or somewhere like that. I would need to charge it. 100 miles is, 110 miles is, is, is about feasible, I reckon. Um, but they need more charging stations and they need the price of it to come down. It's £23,000. That is with the government's £5,000 back. It's a lot of money, £23,000, where you're paying for probably a very good car that really hasn't been tested on the road by hundreds of people. You know what I mean? I'm always a bit wary going into something early on. It's like computer operating systems. Whenever they bring a new one out, you don't want to be one of the first people to buy an Uber to software. <laughs> you want to leave it six months or so so that they can iron out all the bugs. Because these things are never tested properly, are they? You know. Windows is never tested properly. For example, Windows 7 even. You get updates, don't you? Why do you get updates for Windows 7? Because they found something wrong with it. So, you can't test these things. Then Nothing is tested properly anymore. 
James says they seem to work these electric cars around cities like London to get around, but that's about it. The limited life of the batteries and what speed do these cars go, that's probably another problem that needs to be sorted out too from James. James, I don't think it's the speed of the car that is the problem. It is the range, although with the Nissan Leaf, 100 miles, 110 mile range sounds pretty good to me. All right, let's let's knock a few off that because they will always tell you, won't they, the longest. Let's even say it's 90 miles what you get. That's not too bad at all for an electric car. But the other thing I've been trying to look for is how much is the battery to replace and how long does the battery last? Neither of these two questions I've been able to find. You know, how long the battery lasts and how much will it be to replace? So, not sure about that. Um, I would like an electric car. I was hoping, when I bought my car, which I've now had for five years, I've had my Toyota Igo for five years. I'm just so happy with it. 133,000 miles on the clock. Um, and I, I had it for five years. I was hoping that my next car will be electric. Um, and I'm still hoping that's going to be the case. When I bought this car, I decided I was going to keep it and run it until it wouldn't go anymore. Um, I, I set a limit on my mileage. I wanted to get up to 250,000 miles in this particular car. I'm up to 133 now, so I'm just over the halfway mark. So I reckon I'll have it for another four or five years, by which time, number one, I'll be over 50, which is a scary thought. <laughs> Um, and also, um, I, 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 I hope by then they will have made some improvements in the battery. Because it's weird, there's only two problems with these electric cars. It's your battery life and, of course, the range. OK, so battery is the one problem. And the other problem is the actual price of the car itself. £23,000 is a lot of money. You can get a Land Rover for £23,000. OK, you can get a great big Land Rover for twenty three thousand pounds. And if I can get a Land Rover for twenty three thousand pounds, I'm not going to buy a small little car for it, am I? Whether it's electric or whatever, just not going to happen. So two problems they've got to sort out. So thanks for that. Uh, email address to the show, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to Zach, who says, admit it, Chris. People are cheap to buy DJ mixes. Yeah, I mean, it just hasn't sold enough. Uh, it, that hasn't worked as well as I thought it would. I'll, try, I'll carry on for another couple of months. And if that doesn't pick up, we're we'll not that on the odd because it's actually costing more to put them out, <laughs> than, you know, to charge for it than it was to give them away free of charge. Ridiculous. Zach says, um, um, hello. Hello, Zach, who's in Orange in Australia, nearly coming up to his bedtime there, I would think. He says, are you still crooning about Valentine's Day? No one cares anymore neither should you no do not worry anymore about valent next year valentine's day don't do it and don't take anyone out for a meal on valentine's day either because they all those prices go up again take them out probably the week after all right so 14 15 16 21st take them out any day after the 21st of february and i bet you'll find the prices drop it's not about spending loads of money on someone it's not. It's not about the day that you do it, even. It's about doing it. You can do it before or after. Do not do it near that date, because you're wasting your money, OK? Uh, Phil says, I buy cards 364 days to get the to get bargains. What, uh, Valentine's cards, again, if you, wanna, if you really want to sell a Valentine's card, go and see if you can find one now, because I bet they'll be dirt cheap. All right? Um, how are we doing? Oh, it's only three minutes. It's three minutes to 12 already. Oh, I've got some long emails here. Um, the next show, I think we're going to have to run another email catch-up show, OK? Yes, I think we're going to have to do that. We're going to have to have a email uh, catch-up show. I've lost a bit of paper now as well. Just a minute. That's silly. I've thrown something away here. Where's that gone now? In my waste paper, but... Oh, it's not here. Oh, what did I do with that? Oh, is this it here? Hang on. I don't know where that's gone now. Oh, there it is. There it is. 
that's it. There it is. I found a bit of paper. Now we'll do some. Uh, we'll do the rest of the emails on the next show. The next show will be an email catch-up show. All right, to get back at uh, 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 to, to 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 pick up on some of the emails that have been building up here over the last couple of weeks. All right, so that's coming up on the next show. If you want to send any emails in, don't forget the email address is Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. A little bit of Doctor Who news uh, before we go, and Merlin news. Merlin, uh, as some of you know, is my favourite show on the telly at the moment. It's not on at the moment. Now, usually that starts in September. But I've been hearing that that won't be starting in September because what they're going to do with Doctor Who this year is split it in two. So you're going to get half the series coming up, I think, around the Easter period. And then there'll be a break in the summer and the other half of the series uh, coming up in September. I don't know why they're doing that. I think it's something to do with ratings and all that business. And that means Merlin will be pushed back a few weeks, possibly starting in October or November, sometime like that, which I think is a great shame because, in my opinion, Merlin is now much better uh, than Doctor Who is. All right. Anyway, that's it then uh, for the show today. I'll see you again live on Thursday after, uh, Thursday morning at 11 o'clock UK time. Thursday morning at 11 o'clock UK time. Thanks for watching and listening. See you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>